So there's this type of colorblindness called achromatomaly. If you Google it, you'll get close to 2 million hits, but it doesn't actually exist. Try to find a description of it, and the most authoritative source is from a dude on Reddit. So why does it appear everywhere? Today on Chromophobe, the fake colorblindness that just won't die. This story begins as most questions in my life on Reddit, when someone posted this image containing crewmates from the computer game Among Us, simulated through different versions of colorblindness. Now, Among Us is a terrible game for the colorblind, with laughable colorblind accommodation that doesn't even come close to addressing the actual difficulties the colorblind people have. But what struck me by this image was the simulation in the center, called achromatomaly. While it sounded similar to achromatopsia, a type of total color blindness, achromatomaly specifically was not a color blindness I'd heard about, so I donned my internet armor and entered the Reddit comments section. It turned out I wasn't the only doubter raising an exception, but a group of posters confidently explained in a I'm right because my post is longer than yours kind of fashion that it was a blue, yellow, pink, teal color blindness. Now, naturally, I requested a source, to which one offered, My information about it basically comes from years of experience and talking to people on Reddit. And, <laughs> sure, we all know that deep down the typical source for Redditors is generally other Redditors, but most people aren't so bold to claim that as a sufficient source. The poster continued, Very little was actually written on Google about achromatomaly, or maybe even nothing at all. That's how rare it is. And they were kind of right here. Because while giving 2 million Google results, achromatomaly only had 9 academic results in Google Scholar. For reference, the term achromatopsia has more than a thousand times the academic references as achromatomaly, and achromatopsia only affects 1 in 30,000 individuals. Wait a second. You guys want to do some math? <laughs> I took a list of genetic conditions, and I plotted for each of them the number of Google Scholar hits against the condition's prevalence, about how, how common it is. And this provided me a way better power law fit than I was expecting. Now, if we take achromatomaly's nine Google Scholar hits and, and place it on the line of best fit, the prevalence of achromatomaly comes out to about 1 in 12 billion, which is less than one person alive today flawless logic. And, and so in very much the same way that CGP Grey spent hundreds of hours trying to find the origin of the name Tiffany, I got a little obsessed with the origin of the term achromatomaly. I started with the source and asked the creator of the Among Us image what simulator he used, pointing me to the Coblis colorblind simulator, a popular applet on Coblender, which simulates for color normals how the colorblind would view a certain image. But Koblis never makes any mention of achromatomaly, so I had to dig in deeper. When Koblis was first released in October 2008, it was based on ColorJack's Color Matrix software. There was no mention of achromatomaly in the Koblis release notes, but in an earlier March 2007 post reviewing another ColorJack app, Sphere, the maker of Koblis weighs in on ColorJack's general colorblindness naming convention. The wordings achromatopy and achromatomaly used in the tool of color jack are also wrong. The correct names are either rod monochromacy or achromatopsia for complete color blindness, and on the other side, blue cone monochromacy. So the path to achromatomaly pointed squarely to colorjack.com, a now defunct website, but still accessible in part using the Wayback Machine on archive.org, an absolutely indispensable tool during this, this search. Cruising through the archive, there were several mentions of achromatomaly on colorjack.com, so I definitely picked up the scent. Locating their color matrix code and looking at their attributions, we can see that they base their similar on one by Matthew Wickline. Wickline simulator is actually still online, but in place of an achromatomaly simulation, it includes a simulation for atypical achromatopsia. Compared to achromatomaly, that term gets far fewer hits on Google, but because it's an actually real condition, far more on Google Scholar. This disparity is because atypical achromatopsia is an outdated term for blue cone monochromacy. 
So it seems ColorJack took Wickline's atypical achromatopsia simulation and just changed its name to achromatomaly, suggesting it may indeed be simulating blue cone monochromacy as Coblender suggested. Going even deeper into Wickland sources, we find a 1999 article by Thomas Wolfmayer at HCIRN who wrote the original code based on, finally, an academic paper, a 1988 paper by Meyer and Greenberg. However, neither the original code nor the paper mentioned any simulation of achromatopsia, much less achromatomaly. Both of them focused on simulating dichromacy, which is actually much more difficult to model compared to achromatopsia, which is essentially monochromacy and can be approximated by a standard black and white filter. Even more difficult to model is anomalous trichromacy, like protonomaly. So what they did, and what pretty much every modern simulator still does, is simulate anomalous trichromacy as a weighted average between a dichromacy simulation, like protonopia, and the original image. Now we can deduce what Wickline did. Number one, he took the dichromacy and anomalous trichromacy code from Wolfmeyer. Number two, he made his own achromatopsia simulator, which is just a black and white converter. Number three, he saw the weighted average calculation for anomalous trichromacy and made an anomalizing function. Number four, he read somewhere that cone monochromacy is less severe than achromatopsia, which it is in some ways. And finally, he applied the function to achromatopsia to create this weaker, anomalized, atypical achromatopsia. So, Wickline is the source of the certainly questionable achromatomaly simulation, but what about the term? That, that didn't come from Wickline. Did Colorjack just decide that atypical achromatopsia was a mouthful and change it to achromatomaly? I did some more digging into the name. Based on the Cold Blinder post that criticized Colorjack's use of the term achromatomaly, I had a latest possible date of genesis, March 2007, which should at least make Googling a lot easier. And maybe it should be no surprise that neither Google Scholar for achromatomaly pre-2007 nor the standard Google results showed a single result which strongly indicates that Colorjack just made the term up, which is not a satisfying ending. Like, what the hell was he thinking? I had one more path to go down. It was Cobliss version one that was based on Colorjack. Version two was based on Ma Paper, which was itself based on Cobliss version one and therefore Colorjack. But before Cobliss version two came out, Ma Paper changed their source from Colorjack to something else and they were so kind as to explain why on their GitHub with a link to an archived conversation. In June 2008, a developer for yet another unrelated application, Inkscape, was looking into colorblind simulators to incorporate into their app. After looking into the Colorjack code, he wrote some criticisms in his dev journal and kept searching. Months later, the Colorjack developer pops up in the comments to say, you're right. My color matrix version is very simplified and not accurate. I created that color matrix one night and since then it's shown up in many places. I should probably take that page down before it spreads more. Bingo. The code was a careless one night hack job. If you look at all of the simplifications and assumptions in the code, you realize this wasn't a guy that was checking multiple sources to get accurate terminology. Not everyone has dozens of hours to waste on tracking down the origin of a single term. That's just me. What Colorjack saw was a clear pattern of name changes when simulations got sent through the anomalize function. Protonopia to protonomaly, deuteranopia to deuteranomaly, tritonopia to tritonomaly, and then just apply that same name conversion to achromatopsia. Achromatomaly is an understandable extrapolation of that rule and tired programmers are really good at noticing patterns. But his foreboding comment that his mistakes were going to spread uncontrollably through the web is just so prescient considering the eventual proliferation of his made up achromatomaly term. But let's not put all the heat on Colorjack. While Wickline was not the first to anomalize dichromacies, he may have been the first to anomalize achromatopsia. While anomalizing is still today the popular method to convert dichromacies to anomalous trichromacies, does it even make sense on achromatopsia? 
Wickline himself, Kohlblinder's Kobla simulator, and several subsequent academic papers equate achromatomaly to blue cone monochromacy. But is this simulation even representative of how blue cone monochromats see? I mean, not even close. Now bear with me as we're gonna get a little bit technical with the rest of this video. And if you want any more information on any of these terms that I'm gonna use, check out the link in the description to the glossary on my website. Wickline's reasoning for making the simulation was probably that blue cone monochromacy, what he called atypical achromatopsia, was formally referred to in full as atypical incomplete achromatopsia. Incomplete suggesting a weaker form of the color blindness. But importantly, achromatopsia is not just total color blindness. It is a whole host of other symptoms from day blindness to very poor visual acuity. And it is those symptoms, not the color blindness, that are considerably weaker in blue cone monochromacy. In normal conditions, cone monochromats still have absolute black and white vision, not this partially desaturated achromatomalous vision. The important caveat here is that in specific twilight conditions, known as mesopic vision, cone monochromats experience conditional monochromacy, where the rosin cones, which by themselves are both monochromatic, interact to generate some color. However, the achromatomaly sim also doesn't grok with this conditional multichromacy for two very important reasons. Now, there isn't a simulation that existed to, to show this uh, aspect of blue cone monochromacy, so I had to hack together one that is an approximate simulation of what the conditional dichromacy of blue cone monochromats would look like. So please don't try to reproduce it, because I don't want this spreading around the internet like achromatomaly. However, importantly, it gives, at best, dichromatic vision, while the achromatomaly simulation is still very much trichromatic. Not to mention, the achromatomaly simulation doesn't account for the huge shift in the luminosity function of cone monochromats. Cone monochromats are more sensitive to shorter wavelengths because their eyes are all made up of blue cones and rods. Because they lack the green and red cones, which are sensitive to longer wavelengths, red, orange, and yellow wavelengths are essentially black to blue cone monochromats. They certainly don't appear like the washed out red that is shown in the achromatomaly simulation. Hell, the achromatomaly simulation is so clearly not a typical achromatopsia, as Wickline labeled it. Maybe Color Jack knew it too. Maybe he deliberately changed the name from the clearly false to something fake yet reasonable as a kind of placeholder. Maybe? I mean, it's kind of hard to lay blame here. So I know what you're thinking. If achromatomaly isn't an actual condition, and the achromatomaly simulation can't represent blue cone monochromacy, does the simulation, can the simulation, represent anything? I made a video about combining types of CVD, and one of the conclusions was that a mixture of tridonomaly and either protonomaly or deuteronomaly was possible, but would be quite rare. In this case, the tritan defect and the protan or deutan defect would manifest and exist mostly independently from each other. If the two defects were about the same intensity, then yeah, the individual would probably see something mostly similar to the achromatomaly simulation. But calling that mixed anomalous trichromacy achromatomaly would be, well, it would be stupid because A, mixed already perfectly describes what's going on, and B, it has nothing to do with achromatopsia. They're trichromats, not achromats. They, they don't have any achromatopsia symptoms. The genes involved are completely different. Like, you know how Columbus coined the term West Indies because he thought Cuba and Indonesia were practically identical? Besides being very much not? Ooh, or how reggaeton sounds nothing like reggae. Shut up, Dalton. Go listen to Beethoven. Mixed anomalous trichromacy is nothing like achromatopsia. Do not call it achromatomaly. So should we relabel the achromatomaly simulation as mixed anomalous trichromacy? It would be more accurate, but you know, with an estimated prevalence of just one in one and a half million people and no instance ever being described in the literature, maybe it's just better to let the simulation die. 
you know what we shouldn't let die? This channel. So if you want to see more, subscribe and maybe leave me a comment about how this video was completely self-obsessive. This is Chromefolk.